Welcome guys, to part 3 of this tutorial series. If you haven't seen the previous parts I would recommend checking the playlist, link in the description. In this video, we will make the game scene using this board we made in the previous tutorial. We will also add a timer, move count, restart, and settings button. So let's get started. Create a new scene, and add a control node as the root, and name it game scene. Add a panel as a child. Go to the custom styles and add a new style box flat and set the color to 333B4F. In the layout choose full rect. This is our background color. Now add a margin container to the game scene. Again choose the layout as full rect. In the custom constants set all the margins to 4. Now add AV box container to the margin container. As you can see the V box container has automatically got a nice margin around the game window. We will put all the elements inside this V box container. So add a margin container to the V box and name it game view. Add AH separator. Add another margin container and name it stats view. Finally, add another H separator. Make sure all these have the parent node as VBox container. Now click on the game view and in the rect group set the min size to 320 by 320. This will be our board area. In the size flags check shrink center in both horizontal and vertical and uncheck fill. This will align the game view in the center. Add a panel as a child of game view. Click on game view again and click on the link icon and choose the board scene. This will instance our board scene in the game view. Add two more panels to the game view. Rename the first panel to background board. The second to board border. Click on background board and in the custom style, add a style box flat. Set the color to 141722. Then click on board border and also add a style box flat. Uncheck draw center. And in the border width set all to 1. Rename the next panel to text overlay and add a label as its child. Set the layout of the label to full rect. Enter some placeholder text which will show before the game starts. Set the align and v-align to center. Now, let's add a custom theme to the entire scene, I have already pre-made a theme, which you can download from the assets, link in the description. Make sure you have the Roboto font too which is in the assets. So click on the game scene node and under theme drag and drop the theme file. You should see the text become a little larger and different font. Click on the text overlay node in the custom style add a style box flat. Set the color to some dark color with some alpha so we can see the board behind it. Let's rename it to start overlay. Click on the board border node and set all the borders to 2. Also, set the border color to black.
Now our board has a nice border around it. Let's now remove the default white line that the separators have. Click on the H separator and in custom style, add a new style box empty. Do the same for the other H separator. Now let's work on the game UI. Click on the stats view node and in size flag set it to expand both vertical and horizontal. In the custom margins set, the left and right to 8. Now add a HBox container to the stats view node. Then add a V separator and set the separation to 8. Also set the style to a new style box empty. Next, add a VHOX container to the HBox container node and rename it to time. Add two labels as children of this node. Name them time title and time value. Add the corresponding text to each label and align them in the center. Select the V separator and the time node, right click, and copy. Then paste it on the H box container. Now rename the new nodes to moves, move title, and move value. Now add a button to the H box and name it Restart button. Also, add another V separator and again set an empty style box. And set the separation to 16. Drag it above the button in the scene tree. Copy and paste it after the restart button too. Click on the restart button and change the text to restart. Click on the H box and in size flag set it to expand horizontally. Add a texture button to the H box and name it settings button we will use this later on to show our settings menu. Drag and drop the settings PNG to the normal texture of the button. Check the option expand, and set the stretch mode to keep aspect centered. Set the size flags to expand in both directions. Add another V separator after the button and again set the style to empty style box and separation to 8. Click on the H separator 2 and in the size flag set it to expand in both directions. Click on the restart button and in size flag. Uncheck fill in vertical and check shrink center in vertical. This will center the button vertically. Let's quickly save the game scene in the scenes folder in a subfolder called game.
Now let's get to adding the functionality part. Attach a script to the game scene node. Let's go through the code. First, we have a few variables to store if the game is started, if the game is won. Next, we have two epoch variables meaning the timestamp that the game starts and the current timestamp. We will use this to calculate the time the game is being played. The next variable six variables get the corresponding nodes from the scene tree so we can access their functions and properties. Let's also rename the label in start overlay to text overlay. Add an animation player to the game scene node, we won't use it in this part but we'll use it when we are adding the settings menu. In the ready function, we are setting the start overlay to be visible. In the process function, there are two cases one when the game is started and another when the game is not won. When the game is started, we set the current epoch to the os.getTixMSEC which will give a sort of timestamp so that we can find the number of seconds the game is being played. Then we find the time since game start by subtracting the start epoch from the current epoch. This gives us the time in milliseconds. We then set the text of the timer value to this value divided by 1000 to make it into seconds and then we round the value down to an integer. If the game is not won, we set the timer text to 0 seconds. The next function on board game started, we set the start epoch to the value of os.getTixMSEC, we also show the overlay and set the game 1 to false. The function on board game 1 runs when the game is won, here we set the overlay text to some nice words. And we show the overlay. We also set the variables is started to false and game 1 to true since the game is 1. The next function on restart button pressed, if the game is not started we return from the function otherwise we continue with the logic. Firstly we reset the move count of the board, and we scramble the board. Then we set the game state to started and also recalculate the start epoch. Finally, we set the is started to true. In the last function on board moves yopated we set the move value text to the new move count. Time to connect the signals now. Click on the restart button and click on the node tab, then signals, and connect the press signal to the game scene. As you can see the green arrow near the function name appears. Now click on the board and connect the three signals game started, game 1, and moves updated to the game scene. Again you will see three green arrows near the function names. We need to set the mouse filters now. So click on the start overlay node, in the mouse group set the filter to ignore. Do the same for the text overlay, board border, and background board. That's it we are done. Play the scene by pressing F6 and choose the game scene. Or press the second scene button in the top right. As you can see, initially the moves and time are both zero. As soon as you click in the board area the game starts and the time and moves work correctly. Let me quickly solve the board and show you the game one state.
Once the game is won you can see the time stops and you can see the one text overlay. The restart button also works as expected. So that's it for part 3. Thanks for watching. If you like this video make sure to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for the next part. Be sure to click the notification bell too so you get notified when it releases.